Hey scientists, welcome back to Over the Top Science. I'm Mr. Crouch. In the last lesson, we learned about the physical property of volume. We learned that volume of liquids can be measured with various science tools. We learned that milliliters, liters, and kiloliters measure liquid volume. And we learned how to find the volume of a rectangular prism. Okay scientists, for today's investigation, you will need various size rocks, measuring cups, water, and if you have access to various beakers and graduated cylinders, that would be great, but not necessary. Let's get started with the investigation. In the last lesson, you learned that if you want to find the volume of a solid that is a rectangular prism, you measure the length, width, and height, you multiply them, and you present your answer in cubic units. But what if you want to find the volume of a solid that is not a rectangular prism, and most solids are not? Something like this or this. In that case, you use something called the displacement method. So what does displace mean? Displace means to move out of the way. For example, go like this. You feel the air on your hand? Well, what's happening is when, when you run your hand through the air, you're moving the air. It's displacing. Well, water does the same thing. I have this beaker of water here, and I'm going to pour it inside this measuring cup. Now, What's going to happen when I place this rock in? Yes, the water level is going to go up. So why does it go up? Well, it goes up because of the volume of the rock. So it goes up, it's moving out of the rock's way. So the bigger the rock, the more the water is going to rise. And that's what the displacement method is. Okay, I want to find the volume of this rock. I can't measure it and I can't use the formula Volume equals length times width times height. So I have to use the displacement method. So I have here a measuring cup. And inside this beaker, I have 300 milliliters of water. I'm going to pour it into my measuring cup. Now I'm going to verify that it's 300 milliliters. Okay, it's actually a little too much. Let me pour some out. A little more. All right, that looks good. See, I want to use enough water so that the rock will be completely submerged. So my original water level is 300 milliliters. I'm putting the rock in. It's completely submerged. Oh, and it went right to 500 milliliters. So my new water level is 500 milliliters. So to find the volume of the rock, I subtract my new water level minus my original water level. 500 milliliters minus 300 milliliters equals 200 milliliters huh but can we use milliliters as a volume for a rock a solid no we can't milliliters measures liquids all right so what do we do well the great thing about the metric system is they have great conversions easy conversions so inside of this pipette is one milliliter of water and this here is a one centimeter cube if i was to put the milliliter of water in here it would take up exactly one centimeter cube of space. So one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. So all I do is drop off the milliliter, add centimeters cubed, and the volume of my rock is 200 centimeters cubed. Okay, let's go to our science journal, and we're going to title Displacement Method for Measuring Volume and underline it. Uh, maybe you're starting a new page. If you were with me for the last lesson, maybe you're continuing. It's really up to you. It all has to do with volume. All right, we discussed displacement means to move out of the way. The reason the water level rises when you put the rock in is because the rock takes up space. The rock has volume, so the water displaces or moves out of the way. All right, so what we did was eat. we have a water here with a rock in it and it's higher and this here is the new water level all right so then we're going to subtract out the original water level so new water level minus original water level will give you the volume of the rock so the uh, as we know the rock made it go to 500 milliliters 500 milliliters, the original water level was 300 milliliters, so the 500 minus 300 will give us 200 
milliliters. Now, keep in mind, we also said that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. So we again, we cannot label the, a solid as milliliters. Milliliters is reserved for liquids. So we're going to change our answer to 200 centimeters cubed. So the volume of our rock is 200 centimeters cubed. All right, so let's find the volume of one more object. Let's do this Expo marker. Well, first, let's think about a prediction. What do you think the volume of this Expo marker is? Well, let's think about it. Remember I told you that each one of these is one centimeter cubed? So how many of these would it take to construct this? So think about it, and we'll, we'll write down a prediction in a moment. The next thing you want to do is choose what tool we're going to use. Uh, do you want to use this beaker? Well, it's a little fat, plus it's not tall enough because it, the whole thing has to fit in. So we're not going to use the beaker. How about the measuring cup? Again, way too fat. Maybe it's tall enough. Nah, it's not even tall enough. So we're not going to use that. So I think the best solution here would be the graduated cylinder. It definitely fits inside. And I like it because it's nice and skinny and it's going to give us a nice precise reading. Okay, so we're going to pour water into this graduated cylinder. So let me see how much water to put in. We need to have the marker so it's completely submerged in the water. So it looks like 60 milliliters would be a good amount. So I'm going to go ahead and pour 60 milliliters of water in here. A little bit more. Wow, I think I got it. Yep, that's about 60 milliliters of water. So let's go to our journals now and record all this information. Okay, so skip a line and write volume of Expel marker. And let's write a prediction. So go ahead and take a moment and write a prediction. How many centimeters cubed do you think that marker is? How many of these little cubes would it take to reconstruct that marker? Go ahead and write your prediction. Again, make sure you label it centimeters cubed. All right, so we said the science tool we were going to use was a graduated cylinder. And the original water level was 60 milliliters. All right, so let's get all this written into our journal and let's go back and find the volume of that marker. Okay, let's find the volume of this marker. So I'm gonna put it inside the graduated cylinder. As you recall, we have 60 milliliters of water as our original water level. So I put it in. Well, we have a bit of a problem here. It's not sinking. It's less dense than the water. So I need to push it down so it's submerged. So I'm gonna put it just till it goes under the water and then I'll get my reading. All right, I got it in there and it looks like it's at about 88 milliliters of water. So let's go ahead and record that as our new water level and do the subtraction. I'll give you a minute. Okay, are you ready? All right, well you should have recorded the new water level and we saw the new water level was 88 milliliters. Then you have to subtract. You subtract the original water level from the new water level. So we had 88 milliliters and we're going to subtract out the 60 milliliters and you should have gotten, when you do that subtraction, 28 milliliters. Now is 28 milliliters the volume? No, we learned that one milliliter is the same size as one centimeter cubed, so we could just change our ml to centimeter cubed. So our volume is 28, and then you're going to label it in centimeters cubed, 28 centimeters cubed. How close were you? Why don't you subtract your prediction from the actual and see how far off you were. Okay, now it's your turn. Use the displace it method to measure the volume of a variety of objects in your home or classroom. Use a variety of tools if possible. Remember, you can use a measuring cup, you can use a graduated cylinder, or you can use a beaker. And a variety of objects, definitely different sizes. Include the information below for each object. The object name, is it a rock? the science tool, 
and the size. So did you use a 500 milliliter measuring cup? Did you use a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder? And the volume. Make sure you put it in centimeters cubed. Remember, a volume of a solid cannot be in milliliters. It must be in centimeters cubed. Good luck, everyone. It's time for our journal entry. Question one. Jeremiah wanted to find the volume of a rock using the displacement method. He places a rock into 150 milliliters of water, and the water rises to 225 milliliters. What is the volume of the rock? Question two. Why is it important for Jeremiah to change the metric unit from milliliters to centimeters cubed? Take a moment, answer the questions. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about volume. If you have any comments or suggestions, email overthetopscience at gmail.com. And as always, give me a thumbs up on the video.